We have joining us from This Is Anfield, Mr. Matt Ladson, and then our very special guest for the day. This man needs no introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, a massive virtual round of applause one more time for the legend himself, Mr. Jose Enrique. Hello, gents. How are we doing? All good, to be honest. Can't complain. And you guys, all good? Yeah, not too bad, Jose. Good to see you. So I feel like there's no, uh, no football going on right now, or no Liverpool at least. It's going to be international. But let's start with the current team. Jose, I am dying to ask you a couple of different questions about the current team right now. Uh, yes, we can mention a little bit of the league form if need be, but I think the excitement is really about the Champions League. Matt, what are your thoughts of the, uh, the current squad and the Champions League draw at the minute? Do you know what? For me, it was the perfect draw. You know, you want to like a big game that's going to get everybody up for it. Um, obviously, we're all absolutely gutted that we're not going to be there for it because that would have been one hell of an atmosphere um, and a reception for a certain defender in the opponent's team. Um, but, you know, the hope is now that everybody's got a spring in their step around Kirby and they're like bang up for this one and it's a bit of a revenge mission and maybe that carries into the league form as well. Um, what, Jose, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it and also like going back to the last time that Liverpool played in Madrid at the Bernabeu, what it was like around that sort of time at the club. Well, obviously it's different now because like you say, it's no fans. So obviously the pressure is not the same, but obviously for the current team, I believe it's something that it should make them remember what happened a few years ago. Uh, they lost the game. I believe it has to do a lot with the Salah injury, in my opinion, to be honest, because we actually were killing them, in my opinion. Uh, and now they have the time for revenge, if you want to call it that way. You know, we have the time now to obviously go for them. And obviously, like you said, a more and a special defender. Hopefully, Salah has his them and score a few goals and can dedicate them to, to him, you know, and, and get us the, you know, the, and get us through. That's the most important. So you're saying like the uh, the injury to to Salah that happened kind of you know in the final couple of years back. What does it feel like as a player when something like that happens in a game? I mean, there you are on the biggest stage and what's happening. But what does it feel like? Is it is it you know for you as a defender in the back there? What 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 changes for you in a game like that? Well, I can't speak in a game like that because I've never been in a game like that. But well, I can speak you about a Premier League game when you lose a player that is very very important to you and maybe well the season that we were playing for the league title, you know, obviously it's really, you know, annoying, you know, when you lose a player as well as important as Salah was, well, it's been every every season for us, but actually the season was unbelievable, you know, and, and like I said, I really believe we were, we actually beat in them. It's true that Real Madrid, you can never re, really be comfortable with them and you can expect anything from this team because they have a lot of experienced players that they've been in the highest level for a very, very long time. But I really believe if we have Salat on that team, I really believe we, we will have win that. I, it, it happens to us this season, obviously we have more injuries, but it's true that you can see when Van Dijk got injury, actually we have a good reply, but at the end, it affects the team, this type of play, because at the end, they are the main players in the team. Yeah, I mean, what was it, going back to that point, I know Matt just made something there, and you, you made a good point about how, how Salah was at the top of his game there. I mean, A, what do we think of Salah's form kind of currently, and do you think he can do the damage against Madrid going forward? And then what is it truly like when you're sat there and the Real Madrid name pops up out of the hat, so to speak, for a draw? I mean, you were there the last time that that happened for us in, in the Champions League, right? So what does that feel like? Well, it's to me that, it's to me, Rob. Yeah, this question. yeah. yeah. Um, well, to be honest with you, any team really, obviously you tell me to choose one, I will have to choose Porto, <laughs> to be honest. Even if you have to be careful because it's two games and can happen anything. But when Real Madrid came as well, actually it's good news like any other really, because when you arrive to this type of moment, any team is actually doing really well. and. And Real Madrid is one of them. They actually they won today, actually in the league. Uh, they are a team that, like I say, is very difficult team. But like I say, it's, it should be special for us. It should be no, oh my God, it's Real Madrid. No, actually we are Liverpool. Two years ago we won it. Last year we won the Premier League. And it's a part, like I said before, it has to be a little bit of revenge. You know that actually a few years ago you take that cup from us. You know that actually it was going to be ours and you take it from us. So. 
let's do the same and beat them now and take that revenge, definitely. Just going back to that night in Kiev, um, you know, I, I was there in Kiev and I think that Liverpool had the upper hand for like the next, for like for the opening 20, 30 minutes before the injury. And you could see that Marcello was not, you know, the best defender in the world. He was getting pushed back by Salah. And then when Salah goes off, Marcello's now like a winger again. And he's just, you know, you, you can sense that as a left back yourself, you know, Rob asked the question of when a teammate goes off, but when you're up against a player who is, you know, maybe a world-class player like Salah is up against you and then he goes off injured, that must give you like that, wow, and now I've got a, you know, got a completely different uh, momentum in the game. Like that Marcello just completely ran it then almost from left back. Yeah, because at the end, when you have a player like this, you have to be worried about him. You have to be worried about, oh, if I, if I go up, like, like you say, Marcelo actually defensively is not his best skill. So he knows that if he keeps going forward and you leave Salah alone and more in the counter-attacking football, he's going to destroy you. You know, and obviously when he is not there, you leave him completely freedom to do what he wants. And actually, offensively, in that time as well, you're talking about one, well, in that time and, and for very for a lot of years, actually probably the best left back in the world, attacking, talking about attacking, you know, really skillful. So actually, like you said, when Salah came up because of the injury, they were really, really dangerous in that side. They damaged us a lot in that side. And if Salah was there, I really believe it would not have, have happened so, now. Definitely. So fast forward now then, mate, to the to the quarterfinal stages. Now over two legs, can we do it against Real Madrid? And then how do you see us for then fair enough for hopefully if we get past them? Uh, can we go on to, to see the real miracle of Istanbul, given the season that we've had? <laughs> yeah, to be honest, why not? Why not? At the end, we have to believe, you know, and we're Liverpool. Why not? You know, uh, we've done it before. Uh, actually, I, I post some days ago, actually, what happened, and it's happened like the same thing, you know, Messi and Rand is not in, the, in this type of moment, you know. In 2005, happened more or less everything the same until this moment, until the quarterfinals. And then we play in Istanbul as well. So, like I say, we should we should go up for it. I really believe we have a team for it. It's true that the team is underperforming in the Premier League. That's not obviously it's very obvious for everyone. But I really believe the two Champions League games, the last two Champions League games that we had, we actually done quite well. You know, I believe the team know how to switch off from the Premier League and go into a Champions League go for it. And like I say. Most of the players, a lot of the players, they were in that final, you know, against Real Madrid in this current team. So I'm sure they will be like, OK, let's go. Big players, they like that, you know, let's go. And now we're going to destroy them for what they did to us, you know. And I'm sure we're going to go for them. And actually, I really believe we're going to beat them. Yeah, I mean, what's really interesting is take the, take the name out of Real Madrid and you look at current form at the minute. I think it's, a, it's an amazing draw for us. And I think it'll spare the lads on for sure going forward, you know. Yeah, for me, at the end, like I said to you, I know Real Madrid very well because I'm Spanish, you know, I watch Spanish football a lot. And Real Madrid is always Real Madrid. And big states as well is Real Madrid. So we have to be careful. But like I say, if we are at the top of our level, like we saw sometimes this season, not in the Premier League as much, but yes, in the Champions League, we can beat anybody. We can beat anybody. Why not? We have the players for it, you know. As well, we have Jota back, you know. Actually, we have a pair of centre backs. Finally, you know, after the all season, we have a pair of centre backs that actually they're doing well together. You know, we don't have to change anymore. Fabinho is playing his position. Probably we have Hendo back. I'm not sure if we will have it, but maybe we have Hendo back by then. We'll see. Like I say, it's a lot of things going forward that if we have more or less the place that we have fit at the moment, I really believe we can go and, and beat Real Madrid. We can really do it. Yeah. Jose, we've spoken about Kiev, you know, a few years ago, but going back even further than that, the last time that Liverpool played Real Madrid in not the final, uh, you were part of the Liverpool squad at the time. We obviously went to the Bernabeu in really bad form uh, in the league yeah. and Brendan Rodgers, maybe controversially, made a host of changes. Stevie Gerrard was on the bench. You Did you travel to Madrid? Um, and also, was there like... Was there any indication from Brendan in the lead up that he was going to make all those changes, or was it a complete surprise when the team was named? Like, what was the sort of reaction and the mood around the squad when that was decided that he was going to go with a very much changed team? 
to be honest, it's a, it was a surprise. It was a surprise because no one expected actually putting that quality and experience if you want team compared with what you, we normally used to play, you know. And, and obviously when you play against these teams, uh, Stevie, if you ask him, you want to play, he's going to say, yeah, anyone that is a top player against Real Madrid, away from home, I want to play. I don't care, you know. So obviously it was Brendan's decision at that time. Obviously he's the manager, you have to respect it. But it was surprising, if that's your question, yeah, it was surprising. I mean, I think what's really well, what, interesting... No, go ahead, mate. I think yeah, yeah, I was going to say the same thing. I, I, no. I was just going to kind of, you know, what was it like when everybody got back to Melwood? And, you know, was there a sort of any signs of players being a bit, you know, pissed off, really, that they were, that they were out of the team for that game? Like, nobody wants to, like you said, nobody wants to sit on the bench for a game in the Bernabeu. And what was the players' reaction? What was the squad? Was there any talk, you know, amongst the players? Well, at the end, like, like you say, obviously, the, the players, you want to play the game. And obviously, you are mad. And, and, and the best players, they want to play. But at the end, like I say, it's the manager's decision. Yeah, we come back to a training ground. Obviously, like we talk about any decision. Because at the end, you have to realize that a manager manages 25 players in the squad. So you cannot have anyone happy. Everyone happy, sorry. You can't. It's impossible. So obviously, you make that decision. It, obviously, you leave players are happy but at the end is your manager and you have to respect it and with it we have to move on and, and you know when you're a player you just move on game, game by game you kind of think that moment yeah I'm sure in the plane on the way back we talk about it and definitely we did yeah we did, why he done that why is that the, the day after is forgot and let's move to the next game because that's what it is football is it's on the present and you kind of think what he's done but yeah it was a surprise in the lineup against Real Madrid is as well, I believe, is as well the, the respect that both teams have to each other. It doesn't matter if you are disqualified or we even weren't in that moment, but it doesn't matter. You're playing against Real Madrid, against Liverpool, both sides should play the best team for respect. You know, that's, that's the truth, in my opinion. But, like I say, we respect Brennan. Brennan is a top manager for me. I will never criticize him, you know, and it was his decision. So, obviously, we have to respect it. I mean, I think what's 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 so profound there, mate, is you say that that's football and we go again, it's the next game. I mean, I think, you know, we've played such some amazing football just in the current squad over the recent years and then we can see that the dip in form. I mean, you know, if we do, if we were to go on and win the Champions League and lift that this season, then it'd be phenomenal. But even just even just this challenge, our next step ahead of us beating Real Madrid um, in closing, is that something you, you definitely think we can do? I know you said that earlier. Yeah, we can do, but at the end... I know it's not being, uh, it's not to put excuses, but I've been a player myself and obviously I believe no one has been in this situation before, you know, with the COVID, but it's true that every team is in the same situation in that way. But how lucky we've we been with the injuries this year, then everything that happened, uh, uh, you know, in the club, you know, a lot of legends passing away, you know, obviously uh, Klopp is his mom, Alison is dad, you know, all of these things, you have to realize that the players, they are human beings, you know, they are no robots, you know, and, and that affects in the team. And like I said to you before, you say when a key player gets injured, it affects the team. Imagine when six players that they are key players, they get injured, you know, it's like, okay, what's going on here? So it's surprising me that the team, he dropped to that form. It's, it's a, a lot to do with mental health, it's mental issue, really. It's a mental thing. It's nothing to do with the quality of the players because even Salah this year, that you cannot say anything to him because in the goals-wise, he always scored. But you compare the way he's performing to the other years and he's not performing well. The good thing about Salah is even not perform well, but he is still scoring goals. You know what I mean? That's what Salah is. But I, I'm not surprised in the situation is the team right now with all that happened in the club. It's true that, in my opinion, we could have solved that problem. I'm not sure the money that we actually have that for January to maybe have spent more money in actually a centre-back and maybe in players that we actually need to try to at least get into a top four and be in the Champions League next year will be another year. Maybe you can... We can argue about that, that obviously you can have a discussion about that and say why the club maybe didn't make more effort to bring something else then okay fair enough about that but about what is going on with the team with how many injuries they have i'm not surprised 
I really believe that if we win the Champions League this year, is for me the best year of club as a manager of LFC. I'm telling you, it will be the best year, hundred percent. Let's hope so. Let's hope so indeed, mate. Let's hope so. Well, I'd really like to now dive away from kind of the current team and really kind of get to get to you. Where did where did your journey with football really begin? You know, growing up in Spain, when was the first, you know, do you have any memories of the first time you really kicked the ball? And and at what point kind of your upbringing did it take you then to, to saying that this is what I want to do for the rest of my life? Well, to be honest with you, is the one like anyone knows, you know, at the end, your dad is the one who pushed a little bit more for it. I used to love football when I was really, really young, but obviously you come to difficult ages like anyone, you know, that you are 12, 13, 14, that you are leaving a lot of things, you know, with your friends to do and stuff like that to actually dedicate yourself into being a footballer that you don't know if you are going to become. But obviously I remember how I started. I remember for a team that is called Serranos, that is actually where my parents are from, in Immaculate in Valencia. And it's a team from there, you know, actually the grass, it wasn't grass, it was, you know, like the worst pitch you can ever imagine, you know, like crazy, you know, in that time. And I, I, I remember in that time, I was six years old and you couldn't play. Now, obviously, yeah, it's teams of six years old that they can play together, you know. In that time, it wasn't, it was from eight. And I remember, because I, I always been a big lad, they actually did a fake ID with my name, you know, to play with the under eight you know, to play actually with them. And they were two years older than me. Uh, and actually I did play. And since then I started playing. And, and obviously in that time as well, you have to realize it wasn't as much PlayStation. It wasn't as much internet. It wasn't... So for me, it was all about football. I remember taking the ball to the school, playing the school after the school, just go with my friends and play outside. Sometimes go even on my own and play. So it was football, 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 football since I was six years old until obviously I retired. So. It was my life. Football, it, it, it was my life. Yeah, and you said about uh, you, your your family. Is it one of your brothers as well that, that, that played? Yeah, two of my brothers played, both of them. Uh, one actually was for my, what my dad say. Obviously, I never see him because he's quite a lot older than me. Uh, he was quite good. The only problem in his brain, he wasn't good <laughs> in that time. you know. And then I have my other brother that he arrived to like Lee one. He got into playing into League One here in Spain. And then my dad, he saw from me, obviously, with the experience that he had with my other brothers, that I had the qualities to make it, you know, and, and obviously I have the attitude as well because I've been a guy that I never drink in my life alcohol. I never like to go on out party like crazy, you know, like I was taking care of myself a lot. So my dad helped me a lot growing up into it. Sometimes even too much. He pushed me into football a lot. Sometimes too much, yeah. So, at what point then was it turning professional? When did that when did that happen for you? Well, it was actually I was playing because I was like everyone. I was a striker when I was younger. Everyone is a striker, you know. All the Premier League players, La Liga, everyone has been a striker before, you know. So, actually, I, I was playing with twelve years old. I will no fourteen. Sorry, I was fourteen in that time. And, and I play as a left winger, but actually more attacking. Like Barcelona play fourth, well, like actually we play 4 3 3 as Mane, more or less, but obviously left footed. And I remember the left back got injured that game. And actually, they, they sacked the manager of the team that they were above us one year older. Okay, so he came to see our game. And actually, they, 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 uh, our left back get a red card. They changed it for me. I play as a left back that game, I did really well. They promoted me into the team. Into one week, I, I, I went to play with the national team. After, after that, they promoted me three years older than me in Levante. So all went very, very fast, you know, and it was actually one game that I played as a left back. And then I started learning, playing with guys that they were 17, 18 years old, being 14, you know, obviously with, uh, with Levante. And then I start to see, and my family as well, that Okay, I'm already uh, playing, you know, with guys that are three, four years older than me. Levante, actually, the, the young players, you know, they were quite good. You know, it's called Division Honor, the category that is the maximum category you have here when you are 17, 18. And Levante played in that division, and I used to play in that team with 15, more or less. I used to play in that team. So it's when we realized that, okay, if I put everything into it, I can make it. But like I say, even then, the chance is very, very small to make it because everyone wants to become a footballer. 
But well, thanks God that I did it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you did. You did do it, and obviously, then you eventually made your way to England, and then you eventually made your way to Anfield. And I think we've maybe got a photograph of you on the day that you joined Liverpool. And um, had a had a very successful spell at Newcastle. It's fair to say, and then the King Kenny came calling. So talk to us, like, did did you actually get a phone call from Kenny beforehand? What was it like when you found out that Liverpool were interested in you and, you know, how the move came about? Like, what was it, you know, your memories of it? To be honest, I didn't spoke with Kenny until I arrived to the training ground. I know he he was, he was sounded like maybe Liverpool was going to sign Klitschy. Do you remember that year? That, that was the same season. And actually, Klitschy went to Manchester City. And Liverpool just went everything for me. They went completely for me. Uh, they say, listen, Jose, we want you here. Obviously, we, we start negotiation and everything like that because Newcastle didn't want me to leave. They offered me a renovation of six years contract as well. I was happy there. But obviously, when, when Liverpool came and offered, making you an offer of, a, in that time, we were five, five Champions League winner. You know, you say, I cannot say no to this team. You know, even if I was really happy at Newcastle, and it was a team that I will always love as well because Newcastle was a special place for me. When a team like Liverpool come for you, you cannot say no. So it was a no-brainer for me. I was so happy. And 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 as soon as I arrived into Melwood, but because that was the first place I got into, where I remember traveling with the car from Newcastle to actually Melwood straight away. And, and obviously I have the medical and all of that. And then we have that picture. It was like, oh, this is this is different class already. Since I arrived to the club, I was like, this, this is different class. Obviously, then Kenny was the manager. Uh, I started to ask about him before I arrived then, because obviously I didn't know too much about the club then. And, and obviously, Kenny, I will always be grateful because he gave me the chance to play. I always say he gave me a chance twice. I played for, obviously, the first team and played for the Legends as well. It was Kenny who actually made me play for the Legends as well. You know, I actually was, when we lost against Barcelona 3-0, the pre-game, I saw him on the on the hotel, you know, and he said how I was feeling after the operation and everything like that. And he said, "You want to play for the legends?" And I said, "Wow, that will be that will be incredible." So for me, Kenny, a King Kenny is for everyone, but for me, it's the King King King. You know, it's so, someone else. <laughs> That's brilliant, That's mate. I mean, what, yeah, the first the first question then, what was what was that first meeting with Kenny like? Do you remember that first conversation then when you arrived there? Difficult to understand, you know, <laughs> you have to realize that it's difficult to understand. Kenny, but no, jokes apart now, he was, you can see how happy he was as well because he needed a left back. He actually was uh, really, really happy with my signing. He made, he made me feel that way since I arrived, you know, into Melwood. And he was a great guy. And since I arrived, look, I arrived, I remember, if, I'm not remember if it was Thursday that I have all the medical because it was, was like an eight hours medical. I trained him Friday. He made the team train Friday in the afternoon because of me, because he wanted me to train with the team before the game. And I played the first game against Sunderland straight away. Straight away he put me into the team. So you could see how much he wanted me straight away and how much he made me feel straight away since I arrived to the club. So Kenny, like I said, for me, Kenny, I know as a legend for the club, he's someone special, but for me especially, in every single part, he's a legend and a king, definitely. You just mentioned there about like Kenny was really happy. He's got a good left back coming in. Did you realise at the time, or did anybody tell you, any of the players or any of the supporters or journalists that you spoke to, how like left back had been this? It'd been it'd been like twenty years of Liverpool struggling to get a solid left back that was sort of good in defence and attack. Did you realise how how it was like the problem position for Liverpool ever since they they'd won the league twenty years previously? To be honest, I wasn't aware of that. I know, obviously, Fabio Aurelio, for me, is a great left back. He was a great left back. The problem he had, obviously, was the injuries, like I had at the end of my career as well. But yeah. Fabio Aurelio was, don't get me wrong, Fabio was, was top. Fabio, for me, was an unbelievable left back. The only problem he has, he was very, very unlucky with injuries. That's why they signed me. And, and to be honest, I didn't have any pressure anymore. I did have pressure when I went to Newcastle because, obviously, it was a different league. I was really young. But when I went into Liverpool, I just ha I really have a lot of confidence in myself, and I was really 
sure that I was going to do well. And actually, I was doing, I did really, really well for them for a while until obviously I got injured. But I was really confident I was going to do really well for the club. And, and I was really happy, obviously, like I said, to move into that. But I wasn't knowledge of actually what's going on with the left back situation. I know they needed a left back that season. But I didn't know about obviously the left back situation for 20 years, and obviously I found out more about that when I actually I arrived to the club. Yeah. So you spoke there. You were regular for like the first two seasons, very very much. And um, your third season though was the the season where you know the totally out of the blue, unexpected title run. Um, start of the season, you were in the team. Uh, all three of the opening fixtures were won one nil. Uh, this is Sturridge after uh, scoring, and then Simon Mignolet saved the penalty on his debut. Tell us about that season, like how how unexpected it was. What was the feeling around the squad? And when did the players start to believe, like, hey, you know what, we might actually do this? I know that, like, as a fan, it was kind of the Fulham away game when Gerrard scored a penalty in like injury time. Everybody kind of looks at each other and went, hey, this might actually be on. You know, what, what was it like in the squad? When did people start thinking, shit, this could happen? Obviously, I'm going to tell you about my, what happened. Obviously, it was the season that I got injury. So, personally, it was a very, very difficult season. But in terms of the team, that obviously I'm included on that as well. And I was obviously following the team, watching every single game. And I just wanted to win the league as much as anyone that was on the pitch, you know, and the fans. It was a season that it was difficult personal wise because of the injury because I wanted to be part of that, you know, and I was part of that until obviously people don't know, but I actually played injury for two months, you know, before I actually couldn't play anymore, you know, with my knee. And, and obviously after that was a very frustrating season personally, but obviously seeing the team doing so well and I've obviously seen the players uh, at the training ground, talking to them, you know, before the games in the dressing room and everything. It was a special season, probably the most special season that I was at the club, you know. Uh, actually, it was a season that, it was the only season that I felt like when you, before the games started, you were like, ah, we're going to win today. We, definitely, we're winning. You know, it, like, it was that feeling, you know, like, because obviously we have a great team, you know, and, like, and it was like, actually that confidence. Don't be wrong, in my first season, you know, when you go into the pit, you play for Liverpool, you think, okay, I'm going to win. But that season, actually, that you were like, ah, oh, we're going to win easy today. You know, that was like, you're going to win easy. You know, like before even the game, you say, today, I don't have any doubt that we want to win. You know, it was that feeling that it was like crazy because obviously we had Suarez on fire, you know, like obviously Sturridge on fire that season as well. It was Sterling, Coutinho, Skertel, I'm not sorry, he scored nine goals as well as a centre-back, if I'm not wrong, that season as well. You know, like then 11 penalties or 13 penalties, you know, from Stevie as well with, well, goals and penalties. So, like I said, a lot of goals. It was a season with a lot of goals, you know, that obviously the fans loved it because it doesn't matter. We could win 6-4, you know, or 4-2 or whatever. And, and the fans, that's what they wanted to see goals. But as a player, it was a season that, if you're asking me, the, the truth yeah, we actually believe that we were going to win that league. Definitely, yeah. Jose, mate, I'm sat here getting excited just re reliving it back now and thinking about it. And then, as you mentioned, on the different goals and even with Suarez and the feeling of that, and even Skirtle, like he was, he was hard as nails as well. But if I may, mate, I'd love to ask you something. You, you started to touch on then, obviously, that was a tough season for you given your injury. You know, being a being a defender and out of the out of the game. You know, right now we're seeing that with Van Dijk. Like when that happens, I mean. What kind of goes through your head, and, and I, I'd assume Van Dyke's in, in a very similar situation now, now that you know he's you know defending the champ the champions title, so to speak, and there he is, Van Dyke now in this situation. If you had a little bit of advice for him right now, or what does that really feel like sitting and watching? It feel it feel awful because it, it depends. Obviously, it's a completely different type of injuries. Van Dijk, I'm sure he will recover from it 100% and come back 100%. I didn't. You know, I never was the same player after that. So it's two completely different injuries. So I can compare the feelings I would have had because I actually have, like, I'm not sure if it was 2,000 setbacks, you know, after my injury, you know, like trying to get into the pitch and come back uh, inside and like this. So was a 
and mentally well for me was a destroying season you know so obviously for Van Dijk he actually will be looking forward into that the most difficult thing if obviously taking if we can have something similar on that it will be the first few months until you start working on the pitch you know is the most difficult because you are a lot of hours in the training ground more or less doing nothing you know just gym 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 even at the start you don't even do gym it's just treatment 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 and obviously it's annoying because you are a lot of hours there doing nothing watching obviously your teammates going into the training ground and, and, and saying hi to you good morning blah blah blah, and then go and training and you are watching them training i remember from inside in melwood watching them training and everything like that so it's frustrating and that but as soon as he start working on the piece like i believe he's already doing i believe he's obviously looking forward into getting into into back into the team the only problem he has to my advice to that is I know it's the Euros as well in the, in the summer. If I was him, just focus into next season. You know, and that's what I will, that I will say for him. I know it's difficult for, you know, as a Liverpool fan, you know, we always want to see him back and everything like that. And him as a player, but injuries are very difficult and more than what he has. He's a tall guy. I believe when we are taller and heavier, it's more difficult to recover from this type of injuries that, for example, Alberto Moreno has similar injury and he's already on the squad and he was on the bench yesterday for Villarreal. So for me, my advice to him, it will be be careful with yourself, just be ready because you still have long time to play and you don't have to hurry things. So just be ready for next season, 100%, and we'll have the best centre back in the world again. You, you spoke about there, like the most difficult part being that bit before he's back on the training pitch with the players. And I think that Van Dyke made the good move by basically basing himself in Dubai for like that whole rehabilitation, the really boring time that you're talking about. So he kind of got away, he had nice weather rather than being in the middle of England, like complete darkness and everything like that. So I think for his mental health, that would have been great. Um, <laughs> but going back to you, uh, Jose, and the next picture that we've got for your Liverpool career is another very unexpected moment, I would imagine. Um, hopefully it's coming up now. And talk to us about this. Newcastle away. Uh, Pepe's got sent off. You can see him in the background there. Um, what, what, how was it decided that you was going to, you know, we, we talk about like penalty shootouts. Sometimes managers say, oh, the manager picks all the players that are going to take the penalties. Or sometimes players come forward and they say, oh, I want to take one. I want to take one. You know, was you running up and saying, I want to go in goal like you've seen me on in training? Or, or was it kind of like, pick him, pick him. He's the last man to put his knee on the ground. <laughs> For me, probably I was the worst choice to be a goalkeeper in that team. You know, I'm so bad, you know, diving and stuff like that. So I don't even know how he chose me to, to play as a goalkeeper again. Actually, our best goalkeeper was Luis Suarez, to be honest. He was really, really good. Sometimes even in training, as a joke, he used to play as a goalkeeper. You know, but obviously, you don't want to put up your best player as a goalkeeper. But actually, in that moment, I was a bit mad because obviously it was my first time back as a Nancy Spark. Uh, and obviously, I finished as a goalkeeper. I left the club because I say I'm going to a club that is gonna, that is a top six club. That obviously, I believe Liverpool is a top four club, but obviously, I need to say top six. And and then they were fifth, and we were seven or something like that in that game, you know. And actually, we lost as well. So I remember when I went in goal, just the stadium was for. I don't remember if it was the last five or ten minutes, just singing. Jose Enrique, we are a top six, we are a top six, Jose Enrique, we are a top six. So imagine the full stadium singing that, it was crazy, you know, it was crazy. Actually, I was mad in that moment, but when you look back now, I actually feel privileged that that happened because it was a moment that I will never forget, like you say. It was a moment that I actually look, I have the gloves here as well, like I always show them, I have, I have both, you know. I have both here, you know, look, both of them. They still, you know, I never was them. This is from the grass, from that day, you know, from, I, I never was them or anything. Look, it's the same. They probably smell like... I was about like to mine, say. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Have it's the you, same. Have you never played the gold games? <laughs> yeah, I never play a gold. And I will never use them. Obviously, I keep them for, for a memory for me. And, and actually, like I tell you, I probably was the worst choice to be a goalkeeper that day. I'm actually very, very bad, you know, as a goalkeeper. Like I said, I'm not diving well. I'm not, I'm not sure why Kenny choose me. 
you know, but like I say, in that day I was mad because it was uh, against my ex team, but then as well, you could feel the love because why they singing you that way? When they go at you for a team that you play for, why they singing you that way? Because obviously they still have that feeling about you, you know, and, and it was nice to just see 42,000 people singing your name for literally, like I said, eight, nine minutes, non-stop. Non-stop, it was crazy, crazy. I, I couldn't even hear anyone talking on the pitch if they were talking to me and everything. And I remember I intervened in one uh, cross that was from Siola Meovic, and I punched it away, you know? And everyone was like, well, you know, all the stadium, like crazy, you know? So like I said, it was, it was special. It was, it was special and something that I remember as a very, very nice, very nice memory. Not in that time, but right now, definitely, is something that if I could live it again, I would live it differently and smile about it because it's an unforgettable, unforgettable moment. Unforgettable, definitely. Brilliant, mate. That's fantastic. I mean, you know, the sense of humour between the Geordies and then the Scousers, I mean, that's the, that's the funniest part. I just want to hit a little bit about the sense of humour for you, right? So what was it like for you, you know, uh, coming over to England and then, you know, obviously then in Newcastle, and then being in the city of Liverpool. Can you tell us a little bit about the two cities? Is there any kind of things that you remember or any little funny stories about either being in Newcastle or in Liverpool and, and you, you kind of related to the sense of humour? To be, to be honest with you, in terms of understanding, probably is the most too difficult accents to understand if you are from another country. That's the reality, you know? And, and obviously it took me... Thanks to being in Newcastle first, I know obviously Scouts is completely different to Jordi, but it's actually difficult to understand, you know, but then when you get used to, it's, it's like anything. And, and I remember, I, I felt really, really like a straight way into the Liverpool team, obviously because the fans in the club made me feel into that Liverpool team straight away, but as well, because I see so many similarities between both cities in terms of both cities, they are for their club. I know obviously it's Everton as well in Liverpool, but how many fans? Two, three fans in the full city, you know, no more, you know, <laughs> you know. So actually, you know, like, uh, jokes apart, like you say, obviously both cities, they live for their club, you know, they, they are full stadium all the time. The fans are crazy about their team. And for me, I've seen a lot of similarities on that. Obviously worldwide, you can compare. And obviously Anfield is Anfield and you can compare, it's a special place. But it's true that I could see a lot of similarities and I settled very, very fast in Liverpool, to be honest. And obviously it helped a lot that then I met, obviously, my future wife as well, that obviously made me settle even, even more than, than any time. It was, it was my best time as a footballer, to be honest. Even if mental-wise was very, very tough, you know, uh, obviously because I got injured and all of that. Personal-wise, what I lived there, obviously, meeting Amy and all my teammates uh, speaking English good because when I was in Newcastle I didn't speak any English at the start and everything. I feel so settled in Liverpool that I was so upset when I left, very, very upset when I left. Me and Amy were really upset. So that kind of leads us into the next uh, photograph that we've got coming up here as well. Obviously you've spoken about the difficult seasons, the injuries, and then sort of very much toward the end of your Liverpool career, you know, Jürgen made you captain in this FA Cup game. I think it was against Exeter. You know, yeah. I think that at that point you probably realised that like your Liverpool career was coming to an end. Um, but what was it like to have been made captain and kind of what was Jürgen's support like for you? Um, and just that feeling of being back out there in front of a full stadium and leading the team, you know? Listen, I actually was going to be captain on the game away. Obviously, we draw and then we play Anfield. Uh, but actually, he spoke to me because he said, Jose, I want to make you captain in this game. But I want to see if I can get Ben Teke in his best form and let's get his confidence back and everything like that. So he gave the captaincy to Ben Teke because I actually was the older in that team. And, and then he spoke to me and, and obviously, the second game, he spoke to me and he said, Jose, obviously, it, it was meant to be for you to be the captain to this game, you know, for you to say, obviously, bye to, to not bye to this club, because he always never going to say that to me, but I, I, I knew it was, uh, like you said, I knew it was, uh, okay, it's not long now until I left, but it's very difficult to accept mentally, but like you said, this game, it was special because obviously 
captain Liverpool, no one will take that from me ever. You know, I don't believe I deserve it, in my opinion, but obviously no one can take it from me. I've I done it, you know, so it's there. If someone don't like it, <laughs> I don't care, you know, it's done, you know, but obviously you can't compare myself with the captains that has been for Liverpool now, Hendo, Stevie or whatever. So, like I said, I believe it was from Klopp. It was actually a way of saying how much he appreciates me because even me not playing, meaning Yuri, he could see how frustrated I was and, and all of that. And it's a way of saying, okay, Jose, I know you're leaving, your contract is finishing, you're not going to continue. I want to make even some, something special for you because he couldn't give me game time. Not because he, he didn't really want to, it's because being honest with myself, obviously now, in that time I wasn't, but being honest with myself now, I wasn't able to. I wasn't able, I was... I wasn't able to play at the highest level anymore because of my knee. So, fair enough, obviously you're not going to play me because at the end you want to play the best players on the pitch and I wasn't able to play at that level anymore. And, and obviously he made that, making that for me uh, is something I will never forget. And I say I, and I say before in the past that for me club is special. We have a very, very serious conversation, me and him, uh, because like I say, it's very difficult to accept when you cannot play at that level anymore. And actually, he was very, very honest with me from the start. You know, him and I, we, we talk about it. He talked to me about that he knew how, how good player I was before for Liverpool and everything. But I say, Jose, I know with your knee, your problem, this. Obviously, you keep training, keep giving you everything, and depends how we go. Obviously, if you recover, you are part of the squad and I want you the team. But if not, obviously, you have to understand if I don't play you. So I just have to say thanks to him because he was honest from the start. And that's what you want as a player. Even if I cannot play, okay, tell me my face, don't say, okay, I'm going to play you, maybe I'll give you this game or whatever. No, I'd rather you say the truth that he, like he did, and then one game that I didn't expect, you give me the captaincy to say, okay, Jose, I appreciate you for, even if you didn't play for the team, I know behind, because obviously, like everyone knows, I've been always joke, a joker on the team, I've always been making jokes, I, even if I didn't play, I always went the training now making jokes to everyone and try to enjoy myself as much as possible, you know? So he could see that, you know, that I couldn't be able to help the team on the pitch, but off the pitch, I actually was helping some of my teammates that actually played. I helped Alberto Moreno, I believe, loads trying to help into the team and try to settle into Liverpool. So, like I say, just thanks to him. I cannot say anything else. Just thanks. Spot on. That's phenomenal, mate. I mean, Jürgen, just a, a final little piece then <clears throat> on Jürgen. What... Like, even for me as a fan, I feel like I'd run through a bloody brick wall for him straight away. So I can't even imagine for you as a player. I mean, just a, just a little final piece on Jürgen. How truly special is it that we have him at, at Liverpool Football Club? People forget very quick because I know he's been criticised this season and we are very lucky to have him. I believe he arrived to the club and people say, no, he's spent in players and everything. Really think about it. When he arrived to the club, uh, we played the Europa League final, if I'm not wrong, that year, extra away, yep. if I'm not wrong, yeah. Then yes, we, we did. The Champions League fi final the year after, Champions League final the year after again, no? Yeah, if I, yep. I'm correct yep. with all of this. Then obviously yes. the Premier League. There was one, it, one season obviously. without, but yeah. Yeah, but yeah. So he brings success into the team that we actually were struggling to get into the top four. That's the reality. We were actually. It's true. it's true that he didn't win the Europa League. We lost the final in the Champions League against Madrid. But who could have imagined in my time to actually play for these type of things? No one, you know. And, and they say, no, because he has Salah, Mane. Actually, all of these players, they were a bet from the club. Yeah, Mane was doing so well at Southampton. Yeah, but you took a player from Southampton. Salah was doing good at Rome, but he never scored 20 goals in one season. You know, until he arrived to Liverpool. Then, yeah, we signed Van Dijk and Alisson. Well, yeah, we needed to sell Coutinho for 150 million to sign these two players. You understand? So, people say, no, he actually spent in players. Yeah, he did, but if you compare what we spent for what we sell, you can put us in the Premier League as actually no. I, I believe we will not even be in the top six with what we sell and what we actually spent in players. And you see City... And you, for example, you can compare to, to them how much they spend, or even United. United, they speak in Van Dijk, in, Van, in how it's called, Van Wick or something. No, I don't remember the name, because he's not playing much. Van, how it's called, the guy they signed, the midfield. Van Wick, something like that is called. 
Van Gerico, yep. not really getting much game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, and they spend 50 million on him, you know, on, and he's on the bench. We don't have 50 million players on the bench, you know what I mean? And City, this season, they're spending center backs 100 million with Nathan Ake and Ruben Diaz as well. So if we were this type of club, we will be champions every single year, if I'm honest with you. If I believe we have the type of money that actually we I have, I really believe we were the champions this season because January arrived, Oh, and like his injury. Okay, I spent 70 million in Kualabi and another 40 or 50 in Upamecano. Okay, done. I'm sorted, the problem. You know, and, and that's what Manchester City does and we don't. And we've been fighting with them for every single thing. You know what I mean? So, this guy, he changed the club completely. And if I was the Liverpool owner, I would make him a life gift. Like, I know everyone is talking about Stevie and Stevie will be a manager for Liverpool, 100%, in one point. But I will give Klopp the chance to stay in the club as long as he wants, if I was the owner. Definitely. That's that's so very special for, for us to hear you say that from a player's perspective, mate. I mean, I, I think, you know, from a fan's perspective, Matt and I and, and everybody else watching and or global Liverpool fan base, I mean, or the true fan base, not just the keyboard warriors, really, that are saying Klopp out, we do forget very quickly. Um but I'd love to, I'd love to kind of, if I may, now show you. And I know you've spoken about uh, your better half because we'll call her that, Amy. <laughs> so yeah. going forward, mate, I know that you've had some obviously injuries, but then in recent years uh, you've had some, you know, troubling times, kind of health-wise as well. Um, and ju I'd just love to kind of talk a little bit about how. You know, you've you've been very outspoken and said how the Liverpool family, the global Liverpool fan base, rallied around you during those times, and even your support system here. So we couldn't go without without showing a photograph of of you and Amy here at Anfield in the place that you love, um, and in the city. You know that that means so much to you both. But if you can talk a little bit about your journey in recent years and 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 tell us a little bit about that. Well, obviously, like you said, the LSC family. The, since obviously I got my my tumor, they got back to me. Even when I retired, they, they got in touch with me straight away. So I'm so thankful the fans, they are so supporting of me daily basis, you know, how many messages I get daily, you know, in my posts, how many comments. And when I go to Liverpool, how many people still recognize me and talk to me. But like you say, obviously that people say it all, you know, that, that woman that actually is watching, I believe, uh, uh, you know, but it doesn't matter if she wasn't watching. I will say exactly the same. If it wasn't for her, I'm not sure if I would be here, to be honest. And I always say that because I really have very, very rough times in my life, you know, with mental health issues after my retirement, with my tumor. And that actually we're still together after eight years and a half. Uh, he says so much about the, the person he is. And, and I'm telling you, at one point, I couldn't even handle myself, myself or my own self. Imagine someone else handled you, you know, and she put everything for me to to be okay you know so amy for me is is everything she always be, will be and and we were meant to be together there's so many people that actually when it's rough times uh, i'm gonna put the best example that not many people know that i don't know exactly what's the situation but you see for example casillas and his wife they've been long time together as well they've been through a rough period now because of his heart problem and she have a tumor as well and they separated so actually when you see that people actually stay together it's in the rough times, you know, and me and Amy, for our age, I'm 35, you know, and, and she's 29. She's going to be 30 in, in May. <laughs> she's not going to lie that I say that. Uh, you know, like, um, you know, it, it's crazy for what we've been through. You know, it's crazy. It's crazy that, you know, through our brain tumor, through so much, you know, like anxiety, panic attack, everything. And she was there every single moment of the way. So I know LFC family is special. My family here, you know, my actual family has been special. Amy's family has been so supportive as well. But the one who see every single day and the, and the one who see me so down and has been supporting me the most. And, and like I say, and I repeat myself, I will not be here without her, is Amy. Definitely, that's why I choose, you know, to obviously, she choose as well, obviously it's have to say yes, but that's why I choose her, you know, to be my future wife and she choose me as well. And and she's everything for me, you know. She's she's everything. Amy is everything for me. Oh, mate! I mean, that's 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 phenomenal. I mean, for for you and Amy, she's uh, she's lucky to have you in her life. But if she's your guardian angel here on earth, then mate, I mean, that's we wish you, and that's truly, you know, all the very best from all of the Liverpool family. And 
and the statement you'll never walk alone definitely made rings true here more than ever so you've spoken you. a little bit about kind of the mental health aspects of all of that you know you've struggled with that right away throughout your career and you've been very open and honest about that obviously through injuries through different things through phases in your life you know then even in the pandemic you know it's given you a chance to breathe we spoke a little bit about that offline but recently um you know now what it is that you're up to now can you tell us a little bit about that so you've been doing a lot of fitness and mental health aspects not only with you know fellow professionals and fellow professional athletes but even with kids right the way around the world you know and and kind of what it is that you're up to now so i'd love for a moment for you to to kind of talk us into that a little bit. Well, to be honest with you, this project that is called Amplify Coaching Online that many people we have seen it obviously in my in my Instagram, it actually came from from me and from Amy and from Steve. You know, as actually the person I do the hits, and Amy does the yoga in the platform, and it actually came from from the heart because, like you say, I, I suffer a lot with mental health issues in the past. Uh, you can be really really low in one in one moment you actually can't even think in giving up. That's the reality. And, and I'm not feel bad to say it. And in that moment, I'm very open to talk about it because in, that, in some points, you don't feel like anything makes you happy. You know, I have the person that I love the most next to me, animals, you know, that I have my three animals that I love the most. I, we have a beautiful home. Obviously, we didn't have it that moment, this, uh, the house, but I have everything around me that you say, oh my God, why I'm not happy? And that's the worst thing you can ask to yourself, why I'm not happy, you know, because obviously something going on. And then obviously I found help with my psychologist as well and, and all of that. And all of this came from the heart, this company, that actually you call it a company because obviously it's a company and you have to call it a company, but it came from the heart. It came completely from, look, we do, I believe it's 28 sessions right now and we do them for 20 euros. So imagine a month. So, it, we actually, our target was to actually anyone could actually work out with me or with Amy and I joined the sessions as well with Amy sometimes in yoga. Actually, anyone could do this, you know, and actually anyone could be like, oh my God, if he can do it, I can do it, you know, and, and after what I've been going through, you know, with my tumor, my mental health issues and everything, and then I found Steve that is so motivating as well. You know, obviously he's the, 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 the fitness coach and he does all the motivation. And then, like I say, because not everyone is going to like it. Not everyone is going to like it. So some people like yoga, they are completely the other stream. So then he saved me for that. So like I say, it's, it's something that came from the heart and, and we want to build something behind the scenes, like, you know, Rob, and obviously I cannot mention here, but we're talking with so many foundations and and so many people obviously to do a stuff behind the scenes because it's actually something that we want to build. Actually, I want to help many people with, with exercise because I really believe it helps me. Exercise is something that is proof, science, nothing that I'm here too clever to talk about it is truth, is science. And, and I really believe we can have a lot of people found in this. And uh, it came because obviously people can see you as a, someone that maybe you are untouchable when you are a player and maybe that you don't have issues or you don't have problems. And actually you do, you do have a load as well. And maybe more than anyone when you retire because it comes everything into reality. You come from a bubble into real life, you know, and, and it's very difficult. And, and we have, I don't know, we don't have many people to be honest with you in the platform right now, we're just starting, that's the reality. And, but actually just to see, People like, we have a guy that is called Oli that I'm not sure if he will be listening, but for example, that I lost already, like, I'm not sure if it's seven or, six, or seven kilos already, something like that, six, seven kilos, in, and we're doing a trial now, and then you see how happy you see him jumping in every session. That's what's motivating us for this. You know what I mean? It's not about people say, well, in money, any fitness coach charges 100 euros for a class, maybe, or 80 euros for a class. We're charging 20 euros, actually, for 28 sessions a month and you can do them live or you can do them pre-recorded so actually this no come from money at all this, come, this company comes from the heart and it comes from actually does something special with the person i love the most that is amy and steve that actually i met him on the way so i don't know it's just it feels like something that i really want to build because like i say i spoke with obviously someone that I can mention here, but obviously do classes as well for maybe disabled people as well, do heat sessions, but obviously 
that they are able to disable people to do actually people that like you say kids as well that they are wow, the kids session i loved it you know with it was with the harrow school and they were like 80 or 90 kids you know and you could see the kids like shh, like, shh, shh, <laughs> like that and so small so much enjoyment so much i don't know it bring me so much happiness you know like i say you know i don't see this company as a business that obviously like anything is something that we're building and it's true that but i see it as something that is special because to be honest with you rob and matt it's not something that I need in my life. I'm a football legend. It's going really well with me in that aspect, to be honest with you. We, we have quite a few good players. So economy-wise, it's nothing to do with this. It's actually something that we really want to work, to build something to help people that is suffering with their mental health issues. And, and they are not motivated to, to exercise. That's our, actually our main target. From the heart, and it's all from a place of love. Uh, there was, there was, you know, it really brings me back, mate, to, to to a John Lennon quote that says, "People truly operate out of love or out of fear." And and you, mate, well and truly, you know, I'm I'm kind of getting a little bit choked up on that for that essence. But on behalf of kind of all of us here, I, I you know, with with this is Anfield, with Cop Connect, with Carragher's, with Boot Room, whatever it is that we can do to ever help you, and um, we did put it up just to register your interest. So anyone who's watching today. You can head over to, to copconnect.com forward slash fan fitness and then check out kind of Amplified Coaching Online with Jose and Rike as well. We can get all the details to you. Um, but Jose, mate, we wish you nothing but the very, very best in, in what it is that you're doing and moving forward. Um, so Matt, in closing, I know we've got a couple of questions from from some fans right now. So we're going to do a last, last little bit of a quick fire round. Matt, I'll send it over to you. Yeah, so this is the challenge for you, Jose. You're going to have to answer these as quick as you can. Um, we've got some fan questions, so just real quick answers, maybe even just one or two, like, you know, you're just off the top of your head. So uh, one question is from Daniel Forrestal. Um, what was your favourite moment, your favourite moment in a Liverpool shirt? When we won the Carling Cup. Oh, OK, we that's a good answer. I, yeah, I can't argue with that one. Um Question from uh, Niche is, what is your favourite Liverpool song? Ah, you never walk alone. Definitely is the best one. You cannot oh, say anything else. Okay. You never walk alone. It's, <laughs> it's something else. It's something else. It made you feel different. When you go into the pitch yeah. with that song, it's unbelievable. Unbelievable. Very good answer again. Uh, got a question here from Professor Hops, whoever Professor Hops is. Uh, he asks, what was it like training with Steven Gerrard on a daily basis? In, incredible. It, it, it was different. You know, Steve is, is, if he's not the best, he's one of the best players of the history of, of, of the Liverpool, the Premier League, the wall in his position as well. You know, for me, he was great as well. So many people, obviously, you can see, but he's such an amazing guy. He was such an amazing captain. He was so supportive of, of me when I was there. He talks to me a lot. So I still talking to him, you know, obviously, because, like I said, I still involved in football and he's a manager of Rangers. So obviously, like I said, for me, Stevie is, is, is someone else in every aspect. The pass a player, unbelievable. The passes, the, you know, the vision, the, the respect you have for him, actually. I'm gonna mention to you something. Is the only player in all my career that I actually was nervous to talk to him sometimes about anything. You know, it's actually I talked to Luis Suarez, to Riquelme, Forlan. You know, anyone you put me in front of me, I didn't really care. You know, but Stevie, the presence, he was like, oh, it's Stevie. You know, it's that special feeling. Wow. It's Stevie. You know, and the respect. So it's a lot of respect from Stevie and from and that feeling you can control. It was from inside. You know, like. When he talks to you, it's like everyone, I remember in the dressing room, when he used to talk, he didn't talk much to everyone at the same time. But when he talked, everyone was, okay, Steve is talking, let's shut up, you know, and listen to him. You know, it's, he was, he's, he's a very respected guy and I just have all, if one to ten, I just give him more than ten, even to this guy. He's wow. unbelievable, Steve, in every sense. Unbelievable. I think that we all feel like that about Stevie. So it's nice to hear that coming from a fellow player, professional, teammate, everything. So beautifully said. Um, another question then. We've got one from Billy Holt who asks, who was the hardest opponent opponent you faced whilst as a player? Obviously, Messi. Messi was the hardest. 
I yeah. actually we beat them two 0 by matching the, the the front three was Messi, Ronaldinho, and Eto. So in matching the front three they had in that moment, so it was really tough. But actually, obviously, to try, obviously everyone knows Messi. I played against Cristiano when I was in Newcastle as well. It wasn't as difficult because he was right-footed. Messi's left-footed, so he was inside more, so it's a little bit more difficult. But if you tell me one that it, it was very, very difficult to defend in the Premier League, I just want to talk about the Premier League. I remember Aaron Lennon was a very, very difficult player to play against. You know, very difficult when he was at Tottenham. Ben Arfa as well, when he was at Newcastle and I was a Liverpool player. To be honest with you, I can mention loads, but obviously the most difficult, Messi, but no Messi. doubt about that. <laughs> Final question then, and it's a question from me. The pass that you played to Luis Suarez from that goal against Newcastle when he takes it round the keeper, had you played that pass to him in training? Was it something you'd seen him do before? You know, was you literally like, oh, you know what, I could put Luis through here? Like, how... How planned was it, or was it was you as much like taken aback as we were that he's just controlled that and put it round the goalkeeper all in almost like one motion? To be honest with you, well, you could see because I give quite a lot of assists to Luis. Me and Luis, we have a special connection. I believe he was always the first player I look at. I actually, was one of my attributes. I have a good long pass. You know, I have other things that I need to improve, but actually, that was good. Huh? You know, and, and, and I actually, me and him, I don't know, we have a special connection when we were on the pitch. I always look at him and whatever, I don't know, with his eye, with his finger, he saw me. And in that moment, I just look at him. I remember like it was yesterday, to be honest, I just look at him and I tried to put the ball where it was, you know. But obviously, the goal is, is his, you know. Obviously, you can't say, oh, the pass is unbelievable. Yeah, it's a very good pass. But what he does after the pass is obviously... I didn't expect anyone to do what he does after the pass. You know, he's unbelievable, you know, control with the chest the way he did. You know, then he has that, you know, co I'm not sure if you can call it coldness, I'm not sure how you call it in English, but that cool, you know, like say, okay, I'm not going to shoot now. I'm going to take the keeper and then I'm going to score. You know, like, obviously I didn't expect that, not from him, from anyone in the world to do that, you know, after that, that pass, because yeah, it was a great pass, but it was actually very difficult because it was quite high was behind the defenders and he actually is running at the same time as he's looking at the ball. So you have to know where he's going to land, you know, and, and he does unbelievable. Like I said, everyone, I tried the pass. If you ask me, of course, I tried to put it there, but I didn't expect anyone to do that. You know, obviously it's all Luis Suarez. 90% of the goal is Luis there, 100%. <laughs> Brilliant. Jose, mate, still very it's important. been. I know it truly is. I was literally just going to say the same thing. I mean, Jose, we could listen to these stories again for all day long, but I know in the interest of time, we thank you very, very much for today and for your time today. Um, and again, just in closing, mate, anything that you ever need from kind of any one of us within that side, however we can help with with spreading the word with what it is that you're doing, I think that it's it's so important for for us, especially coming out of the back of of. You know, what has been this COVID craziness, mental health is something that, that is not to be sniffed at. And I think that, you know, fitness and health and passion, um, we wish you nothing but the very, very best, Jose, and that personally. Um, so from, from the bottom of our hearts, thank you. No, thanks to you guys to have me on. And obviously, like, you know, I love to talk about Liverpool for me very naturally because I follow all the news. I follow, I watch all the games, you know, so I know everything that obviously you know guys and maybe a little bit more inside as well you know but know everything but I, I obviously about obviously that what you helping me you know obviously as well to to try to help people with the fitness thing is something actually that we're trying to get really far and we're actually thinking because obviously everyone is trying to do through zoom now and obviously it's everything online and and actually we'll have people from hong kong in the classes or people from america or people so people from everywhere so it's very difficult to put them together but it's actually something that we've been looking with all this COVID situation goes away. Maybe try to do live, even go to Liverpool, do it live to people there. And so that it will be more personal and people actually, but obviously something more to think in the future, but it's something actually that is there. The problem, we cannot do it now because of the COVID situation. But like I say, it's something that 
we actually have in our heart. Me and Amy is something that, uh, obviously with Steve as well, you know, Steve and, and, and me and Amy, we are partners, but it's actually special for us, you know, because it's Amy and me involved in this and, and we want to do something special for people and, and help people because and more after all of this, we see how important is mental health and I really believe we can help through exercise. And we want to do something special, definitely, Rob, you will see, you will see. Well, we look forward to seeing it, Jose. Well, listen, Matt, thank you very, very much for joining us today, my co-host for the afternoon. I'm going to give a quick shout out to everybody that's involved in Cop Connect and in Carragher's and even behind the scenes in Boot Room for putting this on today. But Jose and Reike, the uh, the final thank you again is to you, my friend. So um, we're going to close out with another little song from Mr. Mark Kenny. Absolutely superb, gents. Uh, Jose, this one is especially for you, mate, your favourite Liverpool song. When you walk through a storm Hold your head up high And don't Afraid of the dark at the end of a storm, this golden sky and the sweet silver song. everyone hope you enjoyed that a very very special thank you to our special guest jose enrique look after yourselves you never walk alone